the year of addition. This is the year of additions for our lives. Amen. The Lord's getting ready to add many things to our lives. Amen. If we trust and believe in it. Amen. Things come by our belief. And things come by our trust and faith in him. Now, we find scriptures in Matthew 6 and 33, where the Lord says, First seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All things shall be added unto thee. Amen. We did make mention that uh, uh, next year, if the Lord keep us here, if he don't tarry, uh, we're going to look at the year of multiplications. Last year, we got double jubilee. This year, year of additions. Next year, if the Lord keep us here, we'll work on the year of multiplications. So we are seeing a lot of things added. Many of us are seeing many miracles and breakthroughs. Many of us got new houses, new cars, new jobs, new blessings, new miracles, new wonders. And people just getting blessed. I'm just hearing all kind of good, good, great reports what the Lord is doing. But once we receive it in our spirit, the Lord is doing it. Now, we realize that when we talk about the adding of the year of addition, the adding of all things to our lives as we seek him first, uh, uh, turn to him first for help. He's got to be your first uh, priority. You go to him first for your help, then we can see the adding of all things to our lives. Also, our thoughts with his desires, his character for our pattern of living, and to serve and obey him in everything. And we get all those things together, we're going to see the blessings and the miracles of the Lord manifesting within our lives. Amen. Also, our topic today, what we, what we have as a topic, is what's needed for additions uh, uh, you may have, but first, consult the Lord. Amen? I don't know why that is not being printed up here. Okay, there it is. What's needed for additions you may already have, but first, consult the Lord. And we're going to find out that means something really serious because there's many things that we are seeking the Lord to add to our lives that we can just be more blessed. But we got to always remember, we got to consult the Lord. And we're going to find out even in that, in scriptures, everything has, has, has a second side. There's certain things that we want from the Lord, but there's certain things the Lord wants from us. Amen. He loves our faithfulness and commitment to him, but he also loves for us to be obedient to his word. Amen. Uh, we find out last week, and I'm just going to kind of tap on that for just a second. And Joshua, the first chapter, tells how Joshua had been assured as the Lord was with Moses, he would be with him. Amen. And no man will be able to stand before thee, the Lord says, all the days of your life. That this was a promise to the Lord. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Now, we did find out that Joshua was considered as a minister to Moses. Now, even when Joshua was not aware that God was getting ready to put him into another calling, into a greater calling, he started out as a minister. Every one of us, if we're Christians, we are ministers to the Lord. Amen? That means we got to work to proclaim that gospel, tell the word out, let others know how good God is. Let others know how the Lord changed our lives. Amen. So Moses were ministered by Joshua. He ministered to Moses. And then there came a period of time when Moses had lived to be 120 years of age in the last chapter of the book of, uh, in the uh, last chapter of Deuteronomy, the third the 34th chapter, it tells how Moses lived to be 120 years of age. Moses never did, his health never did fail him, nor did his eyes go dim, that he was just continually strong all the way up. And But the Lord had told Moses that your tenure or your working had finished. And now you pass the staff over to Joshua. And as Joshua received the staff of Moses, the Lord told Joshua, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. No man is going to be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. I believe that's something that many of us will be blessed to know. Nobody's going to be able to stand before you and be prosperous over you. You're going to be victorious over every individual that come your way. Amen. He also says that in, in uh, um, that was in verse 5. He said also the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but meditate day and night. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. They'll always have the words of the Lord ministering out of your mouth. Always, day and night. He said, minister uh, the word of God, the word of the Lord, or the word of the law shall never depart out of your mouth. No, we're just 
Keep the laws of God in your mouth. Keep implying the goodness of the Lord. Let others know. Even when things are not going well, let others know. Anytime you open your mouth, it's going to be something about the Lord. It's going to be something about how good God is. It's going to be something to let them know the Lord is going to make a way for you. The Lord is going to take care of things. You know, I love to be around positive people instead of negative people. People that are always negative is people that also will burden your spirit. Don't you know? Evil communication corrupt good manners. If you got somebody around you always speaking negative, guess what? You're going to eventually start speaking negative. But if you find somebody positive, seem like they're going somewhere, guess what? You can also go somewhere. There are many people that follow men or women of God, and they was not even as committed. But just by being in their association, being in their company, God blessed them. Amen? And you can imagine being someone like a Joshua continued speaking, ministering to Moses. Amen. But the law says, and then if you meditate upon that word and that law shall not depart out of your mouth, but be meditating on it day and night. He said, then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you will have good success. You're going to make your way prosperous anywhere you go. You're going to prosper. It don't matter if you go even to an area of famine or lack. When you go there, you're going to make your way prosperous. God is going to bless you wherever you are. You know, it's a good thing. I remember one day uh, my wife and I had got up and we had to come to church, to, you know, to take care of business. And we went to lunch and the Lord blessed somebody to bless us with lunch. Then we got ready to go to dinner. Somebody blessed us with dinner. I mean, we just was getting blessed all kind of ways. I said, man, I had my money in my pocket. To go and take care of needs, I ain't had to spend a dime. The Lord just permitted people, heart, just to say, let me bless you. I have to sometimes fight to pay. You know, and that's a good thing. When you're around other people that love the Lord just as much as you, that they're fighting to try to beat you because they know if they don't watch out, you're going to pay for the meal. But I know some of us are accustomed to people. They're waiting on you to pay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, well, okay, who got the check? <clears throat> Amen. I know y'all don't meet those kind of folks, but there are some folks like that. Waiting on you to say anything. Amen. But I love to be around people already probably as soon as they walk in the place. Uh, give me the check. Don't let Pastor Cobra pay that. Don't let him have it. I got that. And then I'm, my wife and I, okay, give me the check. It's already taken care of. I say, no way. Oh, yes, they already took care of it. That's a good thing. The Lord will wake you and make prosper. He will give you good success. That means regardless of where you go after, God's going to make you become successful. But then you got to meditate upon that word of the law day and night. Amen. That means you got to keep the Lord always main agenda. Don't let nothing take you off speaking on things concerning the Lord. Amen. Amen. So this was a promise given unto him. Joshua overcame Jericho. And I, we know that there was a complication in I because when they got ready to go and take over I, they look at I being a small area and they just become victorious over major area. Jericho, it was compared by a huge wall. And the people in Jericho perceived that nobody was able to get beyond that wall. Amen. We are well taken care. We got this major wall. This wall is our defense. But let me tell you, we also got a defense. The Lord is our defense. The Lord will take care of us. The Lord will not allow no evil thing to come against us. We keep our confidence and faith in him. But Jericho was compared by a good wall. But don't you know, the Lord told the people of Israel, you know, uh, directed by Joshua, just march around the walls every day, one time. And on the seventh day, seven times. But the seventh time, going around the wall, just shout, put the priest all before and let them sound the instrument. Don't you know the people in Jericho thought it was the craziest people in the world. They come in, they know they were their enemies and they just walking around walls. Every day they're walking around the wall. And then every, this was up to seven days. On the seventh day, took seven laps. And on the last lap around, they begin to praise and they begin to march around the walls and, and all of a sudden begin to blow on the instrument because they had already acknowledged victory. See, we got to let the devil know we're already acknowledging victory. It don't matter the way things appear because that's only temporal. But that which is not seen is eternal. 
See, when we trust in the Lord, the Lord is already fighting for us. When we say, Lord, I'm not worried about it. I've given it to your hands. You have all power. You can do all things but fail. The Lord says, oh, I got to do something for you. See, I dare you to praise God when you're going through. I dare you to praise God when you're in a battle. I dare you to praise God when the enemy looks like he got you by the neck. That's the time the Lord is doing more work for you. And all you got to do is let the devil know, I'm not aware of what you're doing because I'm not concerned about it. But my God, we got to be like Joshua and Caleb in the 12th chapter of the book of Numbers when it says that, you know, we are more than able to overcome. Amen, Canaan. For if the Lord is with us, he's more than a whole wild world against us. We are more than able. We're talking about an 80-something-year-old man, Caleb, saying, let's go take the uh, Canaan. Let's go take the promised land. God has already promised it to us. We are more than able. But 10 spies came back with a naked report. But Joshua and Katie came back positive saying, we're more than able. And can you imagine the 80-year-old man, all them young uh, representatives going there talking about they are bigger than what we are. They are stronger people in Canaan. The giants are over there. Uh, we are like grasshoppers to them. Their weapons are more superior over to our world. They are stronger than what we are. And Joshua, Joshua and Caleb, more, than, more like a Caleb, he comforted the people. Oh, we more than able. The Lord is on our side. See, if the Lord is on your side, you already acknowledge victory. It's a fixed fight. Don't worry about the way things appear because the devil tried to make things look unbelievable and unreachable. But the Lord let us know you just have confidence in me and I'll fix it for you. I fight. For, the Lord loves to fight for his people. He loves to let you know if you praise me, I'll fight for you. I mean, you can't beat that. If you just praise me, I'll do the fight. Amen. So the walls came tumbling down and Joshua went and it's come to win in there and overtaken the people from Jericho and destroyed everyone there but the harlot's house. Amen. Y'all remember that? The Lord told the harlot, even though she was a harlot, the prostitute, the Lord says, because she said, our hearts melt because of your God. But your God is much greater than our God. And she hid the spies. And because she hid the spies, the spies said, we're going to remember you. You saved our life because the king came over and inquired, well, that's some strange men in this city last night. And the, and, the, and the prostitute says, I don't know which way. Maybe if you go that way, you'll catch them. She hid them. And because she hid them, they say, you saved our lives. Now we can save yours. But you got to put a scarlet thread outside the window lattice. And anytime we give it to come and overtake Jericho, when we see that scarlet thread out of that window, we know it's your house. She said, but how about my mama? How about my daddy? How about my sisters and my brothers? They said, let them all come in your house. Let me tell you something. It's not an easy thing for mom and daddy want to go to a daughter's house. That's a known prostitute. But she has something. She has salvation in that house. She saved the spies. And the spies said, we're going to destroy everything outside here. Everybody's going to be destroyed in Jericho except your house. So they had, even though they probably were belittling or feeling embarrassed about their daughter being a, a, a prostitute or a harlot, they were told by her, if you come into my house, you're going to be saved because the people of, uh, of Israel are giving to come over take the area. They had to go into her house, and they were spared. But anybody that walked out, they was on their own. As long as we're in the house of the Lord, we're going to be spared. I'm not talking about just merely just in physical form, but also in the house. Connected. We got to be connected to the things of the Lord. We got to have a commitment. See, God looking for committed folk. He's not looking for uncommitted. Some folks, you know, I go to church if I want to. I, if I don't care to go, I just want to go. He's looking for folks that are committed. You know, he wants folks that love the Lord and always meditate upon him because he can always meditate upon you. But she saved the spies and they were in her, all those in the house were spared. But then all of a sudden when, when Joshua realized we just overcame the major area, now we got the little small city named I trying to come against us. Oh, we're going to send just a few men. We're going to send a few men to go over there and take over I because we just, you know, anytime we just get victorious over a major battle, we look at small battles as being immaterial. But let me tell you, still the same devil. 
He just probably using just a few folks instead of over here, use a whole lot, but it's still the same devil. He still operates through the same methods, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He's still been observing us for ever since we were born. There was everyone that spoke in your life and said that you was going to be a minister. You was going to be a servant of God. You was going to be a Christian. God's going to bless you and all that. The devil heard that and devil said, I'm going to make that not happen. So I'm going to abort your, you know, what's been spoken in your life. So how you do it? Make you act up. Just like when a child act up, a child lose stuff. The best way to get a child's attention, take something from him. So the devil know that too. So the devil said, I'll take something from him. If the Lord give me permission, how you give him permission? And every time we act up and get out of line, the Lord, those he loves, he chastises. He allows the devil to chastise you sometimes. The devil will just make your life unbearable. Amen. But then it's to get you back in track. Because sometimes we are so, so hard-headed, you can't move us. I do what I want. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I live the way I want to live. I say what I want to say. I do what I want to do. You can't tell me anything. But let me tell you, the Lord has a way of allowing things in our lives. To get our attention. And when he get our attention, there's nothing that man can do and nothing man can take off you. But, the, you know, when you endure the testing of the Lord, that's the hardest punishment you can ever get. Because our Lord, and one thing you can realize by him, he's a merciful God. When you really know you messed up and he allowed you to go through some things, you can cry out to him and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. And then he'll just take all that off. Man is not like our Lord. Man is uncompassionate. Man don't have, men, some men don't have no compassion, no sympathy, no love, no whatsoever. I saw a woman, I was watching TV last night, and there was a woman that, that killed two husbands. Killed them with antifreeze. Just put it there and just mule it. Just kill them all. Just kill all the organs in them. And nobody's able to trace it because you cannot trace antifreeze. I'm not trying to give somebody an idea. So don't take that. <laughs> Somebody made mad. Don't do it. Because on the other hand, I pray you get exposed if you try to do something like that. But she killed two husbands. She was just trying to kill her daughter. And then they get in court and then she tried to blame the killings on her daughter. And she tried to kill the daughter. The daughter said, no way. I would never do nothing like that. I love my dad. And this other man, he had no, no there was no reason to kill him. He was a good man to her. And this woman was cold-hearted. She said, I didn't do it. And she was there just straight face. Her daughter right on the, on, on, the, on, on the stand. And the daughter says, I hate you, mother. I hate you. I love you because you're my mother, but I hate you. I said, how can you love and hate at the same time? But yet and still, it's the kind of people we're living with. These are the kind of world we're living in. We're living in an evil, ungodly world. My sister-in-law, one of my sister-in-laws was telling me the other day, we went over there to, to check on some of my brothers. My brother passed away, some of his stuff. Sister-in-law was saying she was coming home at night and said a guy just drove right in front of her and blocked off. So every time she tried to move, he bl blocked the car off. And says, and she didn't know what to do because she was scared and there was no cars around. And says so she just got in the car and says, you know, do whatever you want to do. And said, and the guy looking saw it was her got back in the car and drove one off because that was not the person he was going, but he was going to harm her. It, it's like he had mind to harm some woman and it could have been his girlfriend, could have been his wife, could have been his lady friend, whatever, but, but whoever it was, he thought she was the individual evidentially because when she got up and says, you know, do whatever you got to do because I can't do anything. She had just surrendered. She said, I, I knew I was dead. I knew he was going to take my life. And I just got out of the car and says, and do what you got to do in so many words. And the guy just saw it was hurt, got back in the car and drove one off. People, we don't know. You know, we, we are living in dangerous times. It's a lot of evil people out there have no compassion, have no uh, uh, remorse, and can do stuff and don't feel bad about it. Amen? We need the Lord in our life more now than ever before. Amen? So he goes against I, sent a few men, and, then, and most of them were killed. So the first thing Joshua do, get back on his face before the Lord. And the Lord said, get on up. Israel have sinned. Go in number Israel. Go and check things out. Something ain't right here. I can't bless you. Check your people out. So Joshua had to check everything. Whatever, and, the, and the light fell upon Achan. Because Achan had taken the accursed thing. That which the Lord said, leave alone and don't have no dinners with. He hid it among, under the earth. 
He hid the silver and the gold for himself that nobody be aware. Well, let me tell you, whatever we do in darkness is going to come to light. It's going to be revealed. It's going to be exposed. And then after Atkin admitted that it was his fault that the people, men, got their lives taken, the Lord told, uh, told Joshua, destroy him and everything he got. Atkin was burnt. All the connection with him was burnt. Everything he got burnt along with him. And then the Lord says, now, uh, now you're going to get your blessings back. So we got to realize there are certain things that we have to do ourselves. We think the Lord is going to do everything. The Lord wants us to do some things. He wants us, if we're willing and obedient, we're going to eat the good stuff. You're willing to be obedient to what he says and obedient to his laws. He said, you're going to eat the good of the land. Amen. You're going to eat the good stuff. The Lord wants you to be happy. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to have stuff. Don't let nobody tell you living a Christian life means you got to walk around barefooted. You got to have some hand me down. You got to live in some hand me down. God wants you to have the best. And I want you to hear that from me. And you might well say, well, that might be a prosperity preacher I am. Because I believe in prosperity from the Lord. Why? Because the Lord says we are heirs to the kingdom. And we are joint heirs with Christ. The Lord left everything here for his children to enjoy. If you are a child of the king, you're supposed to have the best. You need to stop eating mess and what nobody else don't want. You need to stop driving hand-me-down cars. You need to stop living in hand-me-down houses. You need to stop wearing hand-me-down clothes. Get the best. You get back and line up in place, you'll get your stuff. All we got to do is start backing up. Amen. God wants you to have the best. So all of a sudden, when everything lined up, then all of a sudden, everyone heard about the success of Joshua, how prosperous and how blessed he was. The news got around. Man, this guy destroyed Jericho, and this guy destroyed I, and God is with this. Man, give me the ninth chapter of that book of, of uh, go to the ninth chapter of the book of Joshua. We want to go there from verses Ninth chapter, Joshua, verse 1. And it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan, in the hills, in the valleys, in all the coasts of the great sea, over against Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard thereof. They heard all the success that was given, you know, from the Lord, to Joshua. They heard about that. People are going to hear about your success. People are going to hear about how God is blessing you. Even some people used to hang with that you don't hang with no more. People used to criticize you and talk about you and say you're not going to make, you're not going to be anything. They're going to hear about your success because even though you're hearing about the success of movie stars and how they're prospering, how they're making many movies, let me tell you something else. We are the movie stars in heaven. We are being talked about by the host of witnesses. They are talking about, oh, you see, so-and-so, God is blessing them. Oh, there's a great rejoicing in heaven. Every time one soul comes to repentance, where well, every time a man or woman of God, God begins to bless them, his news gets all in glory land. Nobody may down here may very much hear about it, but in glory land, you are known in glory. The Lord know your name. He has given you a new name. He assigned you angels over charge over you. He protect you. He's watching over you. The Lord said, now you are my child and I care for you. I will never leave you not for a second. They all gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel. We want to call. They all got together to fight against Joshua. You know, that's sound like the devil, don't it? Anytime the Lord began to bless you, the devil began to build his forces. More stuff come against you. When God began to pour blessings upon you, you begin to think, oh, I'm going to take it easy. And now God is really shining his blessings upon me. God is really, but don't worry about the devil coming. Because the devil don't want to hear about your success. The devil already know how God is blessing you. He can't stand you. He's waiting an opportunity for you to mess up so that he can get privy to come in and mess with your life. Amen. So all five of those Different kings got their people together to come against Joshua in Israel. They came on one accord. They was all in this thing together. See, the devil know we get on one accord. We can do some things. See, the Lord said to what? The hundred twins in the upper room, they was all what? On one accord. And that's when the Holy Ghost came visit them. We all get on one accord. God will move. You got a situation going on? Get somebody with you that's on one accord with you. 
don't get somebody to pray for you that don't, that don't believe in what God can do. Get a believer. Get somebody connected with you because the Lord said one could put a thousand demons to flight, two could put ten thousand. Don't you know when you got somebody with you in prayer, you can move mountains? You make all demon in hell tremble when you get other brothers to pray. Brother, brother, you need to pray for me. Don't be so proud that you don't want to let nobody know what you need help on. Just call, call together. We in this thing together. The same devil that fight me fighting you. Same one fighting you going to come back against me. We in this thing together. Amen. So they all got together on one accord. Verse 3. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to I, they did work willingly, which means they worked trickery. They worked cunningly. Amen. And went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sack upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent and bottles. In other words, they were good in manipulation. They were pretending like they were uh, their friends and, and like they wasn't their arch enemies. Amen. They act like they was ambassadors. Every time America sent ambassadors over somewhere, you're supposed to not mess with ambassadors. Because the ambassador represent that nation uh, from sent out by the Americans. Amen. When we send ambassadors uh, over to Israel, we send an American ambassador that, that is, his job is to make connection with Israel. Amen. So ambassadors, you're supposed to take care of the ambassadors. You don't mess over them. Because if you do, you can start war. Amen. War, ambassadors were somebody you done harm when people were that you protected. That when they are representing a nation of people, anytime you go against ambassadors, I mean you, I mean you have started war. Amen. 